Uh, my name is Howard Dasher. I'm the chairman of the Central Hospital Health Authority. And uh, today we're just going to talk about where we are as far as the uh, parking deck goes, its location, uh, possible looks. Everything is still a concept at this point, but we did want to get feedback from the community. So uh, at the end of the presentation, this will be a very brief presentation. Uh, we'll entertain any questions and uh, we'll answer to the best of our ability. And if you're not able to, then we will uh, get back to you. If you name number, get back to you. Um, we would ask that everyone please limit their comments or questions to three minutes, uh, just so we're not here all night. If you uh, have other questions or something that you'd like to talk about, feel free to call me um, tomorrow, and I'll be happy to talk to you in more detail uh, if I can. All right, with that being said, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, right now, currently we have uh, about 1,084 total spaces uh, downtown. Uh, two hour parking is 342 spaces, two street lot, uh, 51, 90 street, 15, for the two hour. And then the remainder are 24 hours out of this. Future parking uh, with the addition of the deck, the deck will add about 290 uh, new uh, spots. It is uh, about the total of 1,374 downtown parking spaces. The overall project, as most of you are aware, uh, there's a hotel. The developer is interested in building a hotel uh, downtown. It's a Wyndham Hotel, 125 units. Um, it's going to be on the Mackey Street parking lot, which is the parking lot directly across the street from City Hall. Uh, it's going to have New green space is going to be seen there, and also it's important to note that there are no net loss of parking, uh, meaning the spots that are going to be taken up by green space are actually going to be put behind the uh, service center, which is right here, where uh, the way of water is. So, that's being that's currently located here, and the new building is going to be built there. Sorry, but this is from Hill Avenue. We'll be back towards Central. Here's Hill. Face of Central Avenue. This is Hill Avenue. Yeah, the water, where you pay your water bill now, the customer service center, is currently right here. Uh, that's going to be torn down, and the new one's going to be built. Um, we are working now 
on a figure out what we're going to do with the parking for the Tim Street lot or wherever we, we put this. If a deck goes up, we're going to have to find some temporary parking solutions and we're actively trying to work with people who have the parking uh, to allow us to either rent it or to do something to, to make up for the loss of lots during the construction period. Uh, another concern that we've heard is uh, people are concerned with the safety of the parking deck. Um, we are looking into options uh, to have a uh, private security detail. Uh, we've talked a little bit with uh, the police to, to see you know, their interest, but that might be cost prohibitive uh, to put a police unit there. Uh, but safety is obviously going to be a concern. It's going to be something we're going to address throughout the construction process. It's going to be adequate cameras and lighting and those sorts of things. Once everything's been decided, what is the estimated construction period? I believe it's a year. Well, obviously, we've done a lot to do. We don't have a final design. You know, we've got a lot to do to get to that point to go over the construction. I would say perhaps nine months. That's the vote. And we're also hoping, you know, the, the final design of the deck, and we're going to talk about some today, we have different options to look at, but the design will uh, be in addition to the downtown look and feel as well. I mean, that's important, I think, to a lot of us who have properties about, in downtown by Austin and, and have a special connection with downtown. I think we all do over the year. So, I would just refresh that 290 spaces or however many additional. Does that include what the hotel is going to have for spaces? No, no, it does not. That is just the deck itself. We'll, we'll bring 290 new spaces. So, so 290 more spaces than we currently have. That's right. Not 290 more. 290 net more sp new spaces. Exclusive of how many, how many does the hotel have to have? That's correct. Uh, the, the hotel is not going to have a, a net parking loss. Uh, you know, they're building additional parking next to it well, to service all their needs. That's correct. That's for the Well, this is just the deck, 290 spaces. Will it be free or paid? Free. That's what we're working on. It's 290 net new parking spaces for the environment. Okay. <laughs> All right, so when we're looking at different sites, you know, they're not, frankly, they're just not that many downtown sites that you can put a parking deck on. Um, we had some site criteria. We looked at lot size. We looked at land availability, as in who owns it, uh, and would it be available for sale, and if so, how much would it be? Uh, we also had to take into consideration if there would be any environmental issues uh, that we might have to address in the future, uh, as well as the distance from the downtown core. first site uh, that we identified is the Tim Street parking lot. Uh, this is an overhead of the lot line, not necessarily the deck, but that's the, the property line. Uh, it's 1.392 acres. The city owns it now, so there would be no cost in acquiring it. Uh, there are no environmental issues on that lot. Uh, the site is large enough for the deck. And the distance is very close to the core downtown, 150 feet to Patterson, 450 feet to Ashton. Second site is the Mackey Street lot, which is where the hotel is going. The city owns this land, so there'd be no calls inquiring, obviously. There are no environmental issues. Uh, the site could support hotel debt and limited green space. <coughs> this is Patterson Street, it's 580 feet 
Majesty Street is 285 feet. So it's a little bit further away. Also, on the deck, we were trying to get numbers to see how many spaces that deck could hold if located on this site, and we weren't able to prior to this meeting. Uh, I'm not sure it would be 290 spaces. Though. Additional sites, we were looking for additional sites. I know that some people have mentioned uh, the uh, site where the, you know, this parking lot here where the uh, judicial complex is. Of course, the county owns that. And at this time, there's been no interest in, in selling that property to us. Um, also, there's been some talk of a, a uh, lot adjacent to the Tim Street lot. And we inquired about it. But no one's gotten back to us as far as price or availability. So here's the conceptual site plan, and this is as it sits on the uh, Tomb Street lot. This is looking down. These are existing spaces on the perimeter. And that, that's the third row, third deck that's going to be open. And then you'll see the second, third. And additional pictures to give you an idea of kind of what it would look like. That's the, the uh, lot count. I can't read my name. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, it, it's significantly set back from all the buildings. That was important. We didn't want to feel like the parking deck was being jammed into the space or confined. Um, so we asked him to give as much space to the adjacent building as possible. It's 60 feet from the back of the buildings, uh, I believe on the here and here. It's a little close here, 10 feet, and uh, 30 there. That's just the second level conceptual plan. gave us, um, you can see the, the brick facade, you feel like it fits fairly well downtown look and feel. That's another viewpoint looking down. Again, that's just going around the side. Concepts and try to fit it on that 
on the top deck to put a solar canopy so those ho uh, cars that are parked up on the top deck aren't baking in the sun and to generate a little electricity? Well, we were trying to keep the height of the deck down so it didn't dominate, okay. especially if it was in the Tomb Street location, uh, so it wouldn't be higher than the surrounding buildings. Well, so those those cantilevered good. ones that um, were considered to be up on Oak Street that ended up not getting to go there, uh, they're not tall. They just cover the parking spot so that they're covered. Because the sun shines down here a lot, it's hot. Those on, out on the pavement, it would be nice to have them covered. Yes, ma'am, well, 
um, you know, I think that's something that needs to be looked at in the design. You have to, I guess, also consider cost. Um, <coughs> but, I mean, it's certainly not out of the question. Uh, but we did ask them to keep the profile of the deck at a minimum. Uh, so it would serve the purpose, but not overtake the surrounding buildings. Mm -hmm. Can you clarify the relationship between the hotel developer and the, the parking deck developer? It's the same thing. Same, same color. So mm -hmm. we pay that person to develop the parking deck? Well, what we're trying to do is work out uh, an agreement with him now where uh, he would build the deck, own the deck, and lease it back to us. And we would pay him lease payments, and hopefully those payments would be generated through the property taxes that are generated from the hotel. Yes? I missed that first part, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably a lot of folks, or several folks that are here, obviously they didn't have process. The master plan, I think, applies public spaces and uh, prioritizes the, the land uses associated with different sites. Um, it's very interesting. You know, I understand that parking is a, is a challenge. We are driving down the it's a great challenge to and we do need to manage and um, satisfy or meet the needs for our parking uh, needs of downtown. Well, the master plan, however, identifies the two street parking lots as a potential public space. While I understand that the proposed hotel site is also incorporating a large green space, however, what I understand is that that large green space remains to be within the private developer's um, area. And I, I believe it doesn't seem that that has been really, there hasn't been any agreements on how that's going to be maintained and whether the city really is going to have that as a truly public open space that's going to serve the downtown community and communities at large. So it concerns me to know that currently when the, the city owns two large parcels within the downtown, one of them was identified to be a public open space, but the other one was going to be for further development. So what, what has happened now, it seems like that has been swapped. However, the uh, ownership of the developed parcel that is also not going to be in the public space is not going to be owned by the city. Do you see that as a concern? We are losing our public, our open spaces. Well. Celine, the developer did mention that, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe I do remember him mentioning when he came here and addressed us about this project that the open space would be open to downtown. That's correct. That is his intent. Certainly, they want the community to utilize the facility yeah. for special events and community events and otherwise. And naturally, I'm sure they'll have events at the hotel that they'll use their space as well, but they certainly want to allow it to be used by the community. With, with regard to the to the other, I know what you're talking about on the master plan. Um, you know, the site where that um, parking, proposed parking area was put in the master plan, uh, you know, we don't own it. And so we'd have to buy it. And so right now, we're not even sure it's for sale. We've, we've acquired it. Um, I'm sure the master plan identified the lot here that's currently owned by the county. And it's really discouraging to me as a as a citizen, the loss of the county and the city cannot somehow come together. And I know I might be sounding very naive with that, but it's very concerning that we can't come to some sort of an agreement where a parking garage could be located in an ideal location, which has been already identified, which will also, not only will it serve the tenants of downtown, the customers and the clients, but it will also serve the, the judicial complex. So I'm not, I would like to know how much has that been really considered and what was done to, I mean, it seems like that, what you, what you presented to us at the beginning is that that's not a real period. But I would like to know a little bit more about what, how much has actually been done in pursuing that as a potential site. Well, you know, we reached out to the county, and I'm not trying to throw the county under the bus or anything, but 
we reached out to them, and and uh, at this time, it's just it's not available. That's all I can tell you. Um, and I'm sure they have their reasoning, and I certainly don't fault them for that. It's their lot; they can do whatever they want to with it. But so we just need to, to work with what we have. What well, is there a potential for? Uh Well, you know, we would consider any option available, uh, just like we do this one, but I mean, uh, I'm certain, sure they don't mind talking to you, and um, you know, if you want to do that, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> yes? Um, first question, you said six months for the planning and engineering, but how long for the construction phase are you expecting? Six months, 12 months? And obviously we don't know until it's designed, until it's bid, and then contractors will submit bids and some will have different schedules, obviously, so that's really a hypothetical answer to we get about that. Guesstimate? Yeah, I don't know the answer because we haven't bid it yet. Second question, has there been a um, third party um, analysis done for where a good place for a parking deck would be, not necessarily just Throw well, I mean, we know that where the parking demands are now, and we're simply trying to meet those demands. I mean, I don't think we need to pay somebody 30, 40 grand to tell us what we already know. Um, you know, parking's tight in the Tomb Street area, and, um, you know, we're just, we're just trying to use common sense and, and, and put it where it's needed. Uh, the city relin relinquishes control. Well, we, we lease back the parking deck, and at the end of 20 years, it is given to us. He would own the hotel site, and he's also going to lease the uh, customer service center to the city for a term of 20 or 25 years, whatever that final term was. And at the end, you pay a dollar, and then you Yes? Two questions. Did y'all? Say before I came in, how long? Uh, I mean, where parking, existing parking tenants would be misplaced during construction? Yeah, well, it's several more times for for us because we know it's going to be an issue uh, regardless of where you know the uh, debt goes, um, and we're trying to work with people who have parking surrounding close to those areas uh, and, and maybe try to rent some space from them. All right. Second question: Are you willing? Are we willing to commit to a certain period of time while the parking will remain free to the public parking? Well, it's the intent to make it free. How long are we going to watch for watch for on the intent? How long are we going to wait to see if Adelora works out or not? Well, I mean, you know, if we can't finance it with Adelora, then I don't think it can be done. So, uh, you know, that might stop it. So, I mean, that's going to have to work out before we can even start. And, uh, before you no, start the project? Yeah, we need to know how we're going to pay for it. Thank you. Any other questions? Does anyone have any comments on that? Yeah. What happens if he doesn't build either one of them? Well, he has a two-year period to build the hotel or start start the building, and if not, then it's uh, bringing it back to the city for what he paid for. Everything it. stays the way it is now. That's right. Never really changes. What about the Tim Street lot? Same deal? Same deal. Same like it is now. Continue to get from one calls about no available parking spaces. <laughs> <laughs> so they did a two-year window, you think? So two year. We play that out and get this into play. So we we'll see if I hold for two years or other threshold. Well, I mean, it's his intent to start before that. That's just a call back in case it doesn't. He <laughs> can't just not build. So I don't know the property. We would. Yes. Are there hurdles in there? Yes. Yes. Are there other hurdles to make sure things are active and try? Well, we, you know, we don't really have all the agreements in place yet, but as soon as they're all done, we'll, we'll know better. But, I mean, we're not going to do it without it. I mean, he's, he's not going to be able to hold the lot forever. I mean, he would have it. So it's a two-year period, this two. It's one year to start construction. Two years to complete. One year to start. 
It doesn't start within a year. Then we have the option to purchase it back at the same price. I mean, the deal of this magnitude is very complex, and it had to start with the, the acquisition of the property by the developer for the garage and the uh, car wash is over there. Obviously, uh, the property uses of that age. Uh, it requires a phase one environmental study. Uh, that study uh, showed some some environmental issues that were not uh, significant, but that required phase two. That was just recently completed. So uh, anyone acquired a piece of property that is going to make sure they know what they are requiring and, and any cleanup costs that they're going to have associated with it. So now that that is all uh, known, uh, then we can, he can proceed with acquiring that property and building the customer service center for the city and the parking on that lot. So that's the first thing that has to happen. And then he can begin construction of the hotel and, and if we can get all this resolved, construction of the parking deck as well. And as Howard said, the parking deck would be owned by the developer for 20 years and then sold to the city for a dollar at the end of the 20 years. So the city will ultimately regain ownership of that at the end of the lease term. And basically, we would not be able to do this project really without the hotel because the hotel is a $12 million investment in downtown that would generate additional revenue for the community that we currently do not have. And it's the revenue from that hotel that would be used to pay the 20-year lease payments on the parking deck so that the community is essentially getting it with no out-of-pocket expenditures. So uh, they are tied together in the sense that otherwise we'd be trying to have a conversation about where's the money going to come from to build this parking deck because there is no budget for it, there is no funding for it. So the project is actually the opportunity to have the funding to build a project. Yes. Yes. No, there's been no abatement of any kind requested or provided. these things are structured, uh, he will pay uh, the taxes he would have paid or the equivalent of the taxes he would have paid because that's the revenue that will be used to pay for the market. Well, there's, there's also, yeah, well, it depends on the structure of how ultimately the development agreement is. It could be that that property is owned by the authority and he's leasing it and he's paying the equivalent of taxes payment in lieu of taxes, essentially. So either way, he's going to pay the amount of taxes that would have been up. Either way. And again, we're still working on the development where the project is. All this is a concept at this point. These guys are concepts. They're not engineered. Uh, you know, they're not final designs. They're, they're concepts. It certainly is. No, the, the, the parking deck would be built, and uh, I think that we, we have different questions that are uh, get confusing. The city is selling the parking lot over here to the developer. He has one year in order to start construction of the hotel, and then he has two years to complete it. If he does not, that property comes back to the city. That, that was the one and two year question. So obviously, once he starts construction over here, then you know he's wants to start construction of the parking deck, get the benefit of efficiencies, economies of scale, better contract, use some of the same contractors to do all of this work. So it's to his advantage, to our advantage, that we have to develop that all of this and have it ongoing at the same time. I'm going the assumption then that he has two years to finish at the parking deck and not start until he's close to finishing so he has the revenue generated to start parking deck. I'm assuming that the parking deck now starting until he is getting closer to the construction of the hotel. But for us, in other words, we have revenue to pay for. Well, you know, that is, well, of course, that's not his problem. That would be our problem. So we're going to be sure we've got those agreements such that the timing is such that there's revenue to pay for. Next question on that. Is the plan to lease, lease the property to them on the parking lot and then uh, lease back the buildings that are selling the parking lot, heating it over. I'm on the uh, Jimmy Street, if you get the Jimmy Street one, then the lease, would, uh, the city would lease the land to the developer, they would sell the land to the developer, correct? There's a lawyer in the room somewhere. I'm not going to do that, but uh, this is not the right lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I'm hiding in the back. What was the question? The question was, would the city lease the parking lot on Toon Street, the land to the developer? Would be leasing the parking deck or the land? No, yeah, no, you'd, be, you'd be leasing. The parking deck would actually, the land would transfer to the developer who would build the thing and lease the entire project back. At the end of that, for a dollar, the land and the parking deck come back to the city. For the CBD, yeah. well, that was meant for the control issues with uh, concerned citizens without losing control of it. They don't know why that we can't just lease the land and let them build it. Then we would lease the parking deck back from them so we never lose control of the land. underlying land. That type of you know, deals are done all the time, which the state allows it to do. I just was trying to you know, help solve a losing control of the land issue uh, that I would encourage that to be closely looked at. But he wouldn't be able to, to trade. I mean, I don't really know what you gain necessarily it's, just it's, by. It's the mortgage side of it. Because he, he's putting debt on it, and that's what the lease payment is going for. Then, and the land is now subject to the mortgage of the debt on parking debt. And this way, the, the, the ground lease would, you know, would not be encumbered by the debt. So he had some reason there was a problem. Only the developer would know all of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then you still have to resolve the problem. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I guess it all we built that, you know, we're trying to do the best we can. I appreciate y'all's leadership in this. We've been talking for years about development downtown, and this is the first, to my knowledge, big development to come here that I think will not only help revitalize part of downtown, but, but like Larry said, you think of all these businesses that we have, restaurants like Tiki right here, and it would benefit from having something like this and we have conventions or conferences or meetings here and I think it would be great to see something like this down and see by life. Sure. Well, we hear about the old days when they have the Valdez Hotel and the Patterson used to have all these meetings and we don't have that anymore. So I hope y'all do whatever you have to do to make this go through and uh, it'll be a success for us. And the good news is that we've got the farm from the farm project that's being looked at for downtown right now. There's several other private developments that are in some state of negotiation or under contract. So we expect soon to be able to announce several other developments that are going to create jobs in the downtown, the people to the downtown, generate revenue for the downtown, support existing downtown businesses, and create new downtown business. So it really is an exciting time. So, uh, Mr. Bashan, you mentioned earlier that it was the intent of the developer to hire local people. Um, I'm not sure, are you saying that we, the city would have something in writing indicating that that's going to happen? Because in the past it has not happened. So I just want to make sure about that. Is this going to be in writing? Well, I think that need to be finalized in the development agreement with the developer. Um, Bill, um, I'd say it's an initial draft of the development agreement at this point. It is. It is. Yeah. It is. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And, and the developer has, has stressed throughout this entire process that is his intent. So I don't see that being an issue, but you're right, we need to get in right. Thank you. The other point was made up about it, that we did try and keep this low profile so that it would blend in with downtown. And also a conscious decision not to have a roof on the third floor because that would, of course, make it more of a structure, uh, make it taller. Um, and also, uh, not having it, we, we actually can use it as special event space. So it could be that there are special events downtown where you use that uh, other level for uh, a big dinner and art show and park on the first two. So it could become a special event space. It could be an asset to the downtown. And again, it was most importantly to make it blend in with the surroundings. And the goal is to put the parking where the need, where the demand is, where the primary number of businesses are for the ease of the customer. One of the things we hear from the community is why you ask people why they don't come downtown is because there's not convenient parking. And so, you know, to me, this is the most logical location in terms of convenience for the customer. And that's ultimately what drives decision making is what if people want to see things so that they will then come to downtown and spend their money downtown and eat at downtown restaurants and they're going to look for convenience. I have the Palm Street, Palm Tree on it. You can put a couple on the well, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
is to have non-paying markers. That's in the best interest, but that's right. when we get to the point of having more information, having everything known financially, we have that not those conversations. That would be the first option would be to look at people that would be interested and willing to pay for parking, downtown residents, business owners that might like to say, I've got space every day, my name on it. I think the one getting all our job in America. Yeah. I want to make sure we come back to the community. We looked at parking facilities in downtown, downtown LaGrange, downtown Athens, downtown Rome. There are a number of them. And you try and look at what other people have done and learn from what they might do differently or what has worked well. And so we try to take those kinds of things into consideration. There are parking decks in a number of downtowns that have added value to that downtown. Would there be an elevator? We know I think I saw an elevator. Yeah, I think there would have to be a requirement. Yes, I think there would be two elevators. Yeah. 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 Did you have it where downtown residents park for free? If it doesn't, it'll pay a lot. Okay, that was high. Anything's possible. The goal is to have free parking. That's the goal. And we think we can get there, but you know we don't know for sure, and we can't make an announcement yet. But we've been looking at it, and that is ultimately what we want to do. Peter. I mean, it's a portable parking lot. Yeah. In support of the project with these few. Things that have been mentioned, I think we need to really focus on and make sure that we do the best we can for everybody. The businesses and residents that are already there that will be affected through the development. Unpaid parking for all, for at least as long as we can. You don't want to see that happen. And I um, appreciate, is that red up there? I can't see. Ryan. Ryan. God, I called him red twice. Ryan. Um, it is red. Good Lord. Um, keeping the land. I think it's a good idea, and certainly coming back, if, if this doesn't work out, that it comes back to the community for see if we can work it out another way, because we do need the parking. So I didn't want my questions to anyone to assume I was against it, by, because I think we have details we need to work out. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Well, you know, we certainly appreciate all the interest. You know, I think everybody in this room is on the same side. We all want to see downtown prosper. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. I know a lot of us are, you know, live in the area or have businesses in the area or buildings, property in the area. So, you know, hopefully uh, we can get to where we want to go in the future of downtown. Because as Larry said, it is very, very bright downtown. It's got tremendous potential, and we're really just starting to, to hit our stride, and we're you know, just getting going. And uh, I see big things for downtown in the future. And so thank you, everyone, for taking your time to come. If you will leave your comments, and uh, I'm assuming there's a box back there, Ellen. All right, just give the message. She has her hand up, and those will be looked at. If you have further questions, you know, you can call Ellen. And if she can't answer it, uh, she'll give me your number and I'll call you, or Larry will, or somebody will. Because, you know, it really is, it, it is a, it's a team effort. So, thanks everyone for coming.